All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at automating tweets from our application uh, and basically posting tweets to a specific account. That's not a user's account. That's one of our accounts that we're going to uh, predefine as authenticated to, to use, basically. So let's take a look at how this works then. Uh, I've got a blank page here. We're just going to refresh this. And all this is going to do is it's going to uh, post a tweet to this account here. There are currently no tweets on here, so we'll know that this has worked by obviously seeing this tweet. So let's head back to this page here and hit refresh. Give that just a second, that's already done. When we head back to here and refresh, we should see that tweet appear, perfect. So this is basically what we're going to do. This is perfect for if you want to automate something within your application to uh, tweet about something or tweet uh, sort of uh, dynamic content. Um, and like I said, extremely easy to do. So let's get started with writing the code. So the first thing to do then is sign into the Twitter account that you want to post the tweets from. Uh, I'm currently on this code course forum account and I'm over on apps.twitter.com ready to set up the application uh, within Twitter that we need to make this work. So we don't currently have any Twitter app, so let's go ahead and create a new one. And we'll just fill in the details that we need here. So I'm gonna call this Code Course Forum. Uh, I'm gonna give it a description. So we'll just say Code Course Forum Tweets. Uh, we'll give a website URL as well. So let's go ahead and type in here, codecourse.com. Callback URL we don't need because we're not authenticating users with this. It's purely uh, for posting tweets to that account. Go ahead and read the developer agreement and agree to that if you do and hit create your Twitter application and that will go ahead and create that for you. So the first thing that we need to do within this once it's been created is modify the uh, application permissions. This is really important before we start to use our consumer keys or anything like that. So let's click modify app permissions and we'll go ahead and set this to read and write. If you set this to read only then start to use your keys they'll be invalid you'll need to regenerate keys. So make sure you do this step before. Hit update and that will go ahead and update that for us. Now this sometimes take a while, uh, takes a while to uh, for it to change, uh, take effect. So uh, if it's not working immediately, that's that's not a problem. Just wait for a couple of minutes. So come over to the keys and access tokens tab, and you'll see your application settings. Uh, this will give you your consumer key and your consumer secret. And we also need to generate an access token. And the reason for this is we're not doing this on a user basis. We want to create an access token to specifically define within our code that we're going to be writing soon. This just makes sure that we're authenticated. So we're explicitly saying we are authenticated. So go ahead and click create my access token. That will generate that for you. And in just a moment, you'll see these here. So the keys that we need are the consumer key here the consumer secret, we also need the access token and the access token secret as well. So we're going to be using these explicitly within our application. You should not share these keys with anyone and they shouldn't be human readable in your application, preferably stored in a database somewhere. But for now, we're just going to copy and paste them in and I'll let you decide where it's best to place them for you. So now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and use uh, some kind of library to connect to Twitter's API. So I'm going to be using CodeBird PHP. This is a really easy to use library. We need to download and install this with Composer, which is a dependency manager for PHP. And then once we've done that, it's going to be super simple to get this going. So if we head over to Packagist, uh, we can actually pull in with Composer uh, a specific version of this, uh, this library. And I'm going to be pulling in 2.6.star, so any increments on, on this. So to do that, we're going to head over to our text editor. And under our root directory, we're going to create a new file. And we're going to call this composer.json. Now make sure you do have Composer installed beforehand. Head over to getcomposer.org to download this. So we're going to start off this JSON string then and we're going to require in a specific package. This can be done from the command line but I'll do it here just so it's a little bit more uh, explicit. And we want to require something in here. And what we want to require is uh, the repository and where this is hosted. So I'm going to copy and paste this just into here. Uh, 
and we want to change this dev master we don't want to pull in the dev master uh, version of this so we're going to pull in 2.6.star so we can just type 2.6.star in here and that's it it's done so now we need to install the dependency which is going to create a vendor folder and an auto loader to load in any dependencies we have within our application now bear in mind you can go ahead and download codebird uh, on its own if you really wanted to so if you head over to the source directory you can go ahead and download it this all it's a little bit more complicated that way just to to, to keep uh, up to date with the latest versions so I would highly recommend using composer but if you really don't want to you can download this manually uh, and this will give you instructions here to include it and, and do everything else so head over to your command line then making sure you have composer installed um, which I do I'm going to hit composer install which is going to install my dependencies you can see my composer version is a little out of date uh, so if yours is go ahead and run self update to update it and that looks like it has successfully downloaded codebird so what we can now do is check inside of our uh, main directory and we can open this vendor folder and you can see that we've got that installed here we've also got this auto load file which we need to require in anywhere where we want our uh, dependencies to be accessed so the first thing I'm going to do then is require in vendor autoload.php and that's it so we now have full access to this codebird library and we can start using it so codebird is namespaced if we just scroll down on the github repository it's namespaced under codebird codebird so we're going to need to go ahead and import this so we're going to say use codebird codebird and then down here we can just start to use it so I'm going to create a variable called CB uh, for Codebird and that's just going to be a new Codebird instance and we can now use any of the methods to set our consumer key which we've already seen on that Twitter application set our token and then go ahead and update our status so the first thing we want to do then is set our consumer key so we use the uh, set consumer key method and this takes two parameters which is our consumer key and our consumer secret so if we head over to our uh, keys and access tokens let's go ahead and just copy this and let's paste this in here as the first argument I'm going to pull this down just because this does get a little bit long we don't want it to run over too many lines and we're going to pull in our API secret as well so uh, consumer key secret so let's pop that in there so that's the first step now normally with Codebird or any other uh, library that connects to Twitter API you would use OAuth to authenticate a user like I've already said in our case we don't want to do that because we're not dealing with users we're just dealing with our Twitter account so we're going to explicitly define the token here so let's go ahead and do that it works in exactly the same way we've got two arguments the first being the token and then we've got the secret so let's scroll down and copy and paste the access token just into here and then let's go ahead and copy and paste our secret just into here so now anything that we uh, do with the codebird library we're fully authenticated now so we can go ahead and update our status so the method that we use for this is statuses update and then we pass in an array of options now there are plenty of options you can find everything you need on the Codebird uh, repository on GitHub. So go ahead and do read that. Make sure you understand uh, everything that you can do with it and can't do. And for this, it, well, in this case, all we need to do is pass in a status key. And this is just going to be the status. You can do things like post geolocation here. So once you're done with this tutorial, go ahead and check out the kinds of things that you can do. So let's just go ahead and uh, type some text in here. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to refresh this page now. That's going to uh, obviously set our consumer key, set our token, and it's going to update our status. So if we head over to here, remember we have no tweets uh, at the moment. If we head over to our page and refresh. Hopefully we get no errors. And when I refresh this page, you can see that that's gone ahead and updated and uh, created a status. And obviously we can do that as many times as we want, and it will just go ahead and add uh, more for us so I guess if they are different so we can do something else here like so 
Okay, so that is how easy it is to automate tweeting from a particular account. This can be used for a wide variety of things. I'm sure you can think up some really cool things to do with this, uh, but that is pretty much it. So simple and uh, really cool if you do need to use this.